I just finished a tutorial on radial speed lines and none other than Mr. Josiah himself wanted to know how you do linear speed lines. Let's get to it. Stay tuned. What's up, Survivalists? It's Jay from Team WNJ here. If you're not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and hit that bell icon to stay notified whenever I upload a new video on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. If you're already subscribed, welcome back. It's great to see you again. Make sure you leave a comment so I can remember who you are. Let's try to get this video up to 10 likes. On to the video. Let's first take a look at what we'll be making today. Now, so, so this here is the final composition. So we're gonna be doing a lot of visual effects work today. So let me break it down into its three main parts. The first part is going to teach you how to generate these lines using After Effects. The second part is gonna show you how to split your character from its background using Cinema 4D's Object Buffer. And if you're not using Cinema 4D, you'll be using After Effects Rotoscope. Even if you are a Cinema 4D user, it's good to know the rotoscoping technique as well. The final step here is compositing, which means putting everything together. Let's get to making the lines. All right, so here we are in After Effects. I've got a blank project. So the first thing I wanna do is create a new composition that we can work in. I'm gonna right click in this project field up here and go to new composition. And I'm gonna call this composition speed line. I'm gonna make sure everything else is set the way it should be and hit okay. This will create a new composition for us to work in. Within the speed lines comp, I'm gonna press control Y. This is gonna create a new solid and we wanna make this solid sort of like a reddish color. This is going to be our background. Let's also name this BG so we can stay organized. Now one plain color background might be fine for you, but I like a little bit of color in mind. So let's add the gradient ramp effect onto it. Switch the ramp shade to a radial lamp so you get this big circle on your black dot. Let's move this to the corner and move this second point out to the outside. Let's change the colors to be something more complimenting. So let's say this first one would be a bright orange and the second one will be a dark red. This just makes it a bit more interesting than just one flat color. Next, I'm gonna create a space for the speed lines to go and I want them to go straight across. To do that, I'm gonna create another shape layer, Control Y, and let's make this color sort of a bright orange yellowish color like so. Let's name this the stroke. With the stroke layer selected, I'm gonna press Q on my keyboard. This is gonna switch me to the rectangle selection tool and all I'm gonna do is draw a little rectangle over here right in the middle where I want the speed lines to go. I'm gonna press F on the keyboard. It's gonna bring up our mask feather options and allow us to feather our mask like so. Now that looks pretty good to me. Now let's add in the actual lines. Create a new solid layer again this time. It doesn't really matter what the color is, but I like to set a default of white. I'm gonna name this one lines. We're actually gonna start putting the lines in, but how do we do that? Well, let's first add the fractal noise effect. This is gonna turn our layer into this noisy image. And let's crank up this contrast so that we can have very sharp differentiations between the white and black areas. We don't want any soft blurry areas. We want them as sharp as possible, like so. Let's also crank up that brightness so we don't have that many dark spots. Something like that looks good. And let's twirl down the transform settings over here. Uncheck uniform scaling. This will allow us to change the width and height independently. And instead of just scaling this width up manually, let's just click on it and type in 3000. That's really gonna stretch out our texture and you can start to see where this is going. Let's bring the height down manually until it looks good. So somewhere around there looks nice and we can start seeing our speed lines take effect. Select our stroke layer, press M on the keyboard to bring out our mask options. Select the mask, hit Control C for copy. Select our lines layer and hit Control V for paste. This will paste our mask on the stroke layer onto the lines layer. Now let's switch the blend mode of our lines layer to multiply. If you don't see your modes options here, there's a toggle switches slash modes button right down here. So just switch that until you see the blending mode options and select multiply. We've got some pretty decent lines in, but the lines don't look too good right now. On the lines layer, let's add the tint effect. This will allow us to change the colors of the noise layer independently. So I'm gonna remap the black here to a dark brown orangish color, like so. Now this looks good and all, but there's a problem. It doesn't move. Let's fix that. In the fractal noise effect of the lines layer, find evolution, hold down alt and click on the stopwatch. This will allow us to add expressions. In the expressions window, we're gonna type in time times 1000. Do not hit enter, simply click off somewhere else. And now we can see that the lines automatically move by themselves. So this looks cool and all, but it doesn't look cool enough. Let's add more lines. Don't worry, we don't have to repeat everything. Simply select our lines layer and hit Control D to duplicate the layer. Let's rename this layer to big lines and you can guess what we're gonna do here. Let's drop down our transform options and scale up the height. Now we get some bigger lines, but that's not all we're gonna do. Let's crank up the brightness a little bit so we can have less lines. Let's play with the offset a little bit. So let's move it down a slight bit and 
back a slight bit. Oh, would you look at that? We got a whole ton more lines moving around and it looks a whole ton cooler. But it could be even cooler. Let's duplicate the original lines layer and move this onto the very top. Let's name this highlights. First thing we're gonna do here is switch the blending mode to add. That's gonna blow out our image, but that's all right. Let's go into our tint settings on the highlights layer and switch the white to black. Then let's also change our map black two color to a bright orange. I don't want that many highlights in there, so I'm gonna crank up that brightness so that we have less lines. I'm gonna twirl down our transform options and offset this a little bit so that it doesn't line up perfectly with the existing lines. I'm also gonna scale up the width to 4,000 just to see what happens. Now if we play it, this is what it looks like. Now because these are also highlights and they glow, let's add the glow effect on. The default glow looks pretty nice, but I advise that you twirl around with the intensity slider over here as well as the glow radius slider. I personally like ignoring the glow threshold. Now if we play it, it looks like this. Nice. That's great, but I wanna make these lines pop a bit more. An easy way to do that is to darken everything else around it. Let's select our stroke layer and duplicate it. Move it to the top, press M on our keyboard to bring out our mask options, and hit this inverted option. That's going to invert the mask and put the orange everywhere else on the outside. Now we can switch our blending mode to something like multiply and everything automatically gets darker. Feel free to play around with different blending modes to see what results you get. You might like something else. The final touch I want to add here is a vignette. Now you could create this vignette by yourself in After Effects, but I personally just use like a PNG and just drop it in wherever I need them. Once I have the basic vignette in, I'm gonna switch the blend mode to multiply and drop the opacity down to 50. Now let's play it, and I would call this a satisfying speed line effect. Let's move on to the second part. So we just finished creating the lines, let's take a look at what we have to work with. As you can see, this character has a white background on him, meaning we're gonna have to find a way to isolate the character from the background. Fortunately, there's a lot of different ways to do this in visual effects, and I'm gonna show you two of them. If you do not have Cinema 4D and only After Effects, jump to this timestamp. All right, so I'm assuming you have Cinema 4D. What are you looking at here? You are currently looking at an object buffer rendered from Cinema 4D. We can put this into After Effects, and what After Effects will do is take a look at what areas are black and what areas are white. It'll keep the white areas and make the black areas transparent. Let's find out how I did this. Here we are in Cinema 4D, and this is the scene. The thing I want the object buffer to render is this blacksmith character. So all I'm gonna do is select the blacksmith character, right click, go to Cinema 4D tags, and go under compositing. The compositing tag can do a lot of cool things, but all we're gonna do is go to the object buffer tag over here and hit enable on buffer one. Now the blacksmith is assigned to buffer layer one. Let's go to our render settings, enable multipass, and in our multipass settings, let's go to object buffer. Make sure the group ID is set to whatever you want the object buffer to render. In this case, it is one. Don't forget that in your save options, you have to enable multipass image save over here. Make sure it's in the correct directory and in the correct format. After you finish rendering, you're gonna notice not two, but three files. Ignore the RGB one. All you need to care about is the original one and the object buffer. Let's drag these into After Effects. Right click on the main render and hit new comp from selection. This will automatically create a composition with our selected clip in the composition. For efficiency sake, let's do this now. Duplicate this main layer and just leave it there. I'm gonna get to why that's useful later, but just do that for now. Find the object buffer and drag that in on top of everything. On our second layer, go to our track mat options and select luma mat. This is going to tell After Effects to identify the black and white parts of the object buffer. Now, if we disable the bottom layer, we can see that the character has indeed been isolated. Let's select the first two layers here, right click and go to pre-compose. And let's call this, uh, whatever your character is called, let's call this one blacksmith. Make sure to move all attributes to the new composition, as well as the adjust the composition to the duration of the time span. Then press OK. I'm gonna rename the duplicated layer to BG for now. Great, now we've got two layers, the blacksmith layer and the BG layer. But what if you didn't have access to this object buffer? How would you split the character from the background? That's where After Effects Roto Brush comes in. I'm going to right click on our main footage here and go to new comp from selection. This will create a new composition with our layer already imported into it. Once imported, double click on this main layer and you open it into a new tab. In this tab, you are able to use the Roto Brush, which you can find on the top toolbar right over here. Once you select the Roto Brush, your cursor is going to change this green circle with a plus sign in the middle of it. With this brush, what you're gonna do is select the main area you want to keep. So in this case, it's this blacksmith. Do not select around the edges of what you want selected, select in the main area unless you are already on an edge. 
Once it's fully selected, you're gonna see this purple outline around your character. Hit page down to go to the next frame. As you can see, After Effects will try to do its best job at tracking our character, but it will fail sometimes, such as here. If it does fail, simply draw another green stroke in the failed area and it should fix the problem. Once that's done, hit page down again to go to the next frame. As you can see here, After Effects identified the background as part of our character, and we don't want that. Hold Alt on a keyboard, and this is gonna switch our cursor to a red circle with a minus in the middle of it, and let's select the areas that we don't want to be rotoscoped. So this area right here, and After Effects will try to do its best job to cut that area out. We're going to repeat this for every single frame until we no longer need to rotoscope anymore. An important thing to note while using the roto brush is to not press undo that much. Let's take a look at this situation where his finger is excluded for whatever reason. If we were to draw a green line over his finger, it would automatically detect this white part as well. Do not undo this. Hold down Alt and negate this area. This is going to teach After Effects what it should look for. The Roto brush learns from these types of mistakes and adapts to find the actual edges that you want. Here's a situation where the space I need to negate is smaller than my brush. I'm gonna hold down Control, left click, and start dragging this smaller. This will allow me to fit into tinier details like these. I can negate it much easier. Now this is going to take quite a lot of time, so I do recommend pulling up some sort of podcast to watch while you're going through this. And hey, why not listen to the Levisley Production Diary while you're at it? That's our podcast where we put all our skills to use in making the web series Levisley that is being made on this channel. So you can get two birds with one stone. Check out the Levisley Podcast while rotoscoping. All right, so once you're done with the main rotoscope, and I'm not, I'm just using this as an example, go back to our composition tab right up here. And as you can see, it did indeed separate the background from our character. If we play back the few frames that I did rotoscope, you can see that we did a relatively good job. Once you're satisfied, let's go back to our layers here and hit the freeze button down here. This is going to cache and lock the roto, so you can't make any more changes, but it's going to run a lot faster. With this step done, Cinema people and After Effects people gather back up together because we are moving on to compositing. Let's actually put the speed lines and the characters together. Now for the After Effects people who skipped the cinema bit, this is what we made in cinema. It's pretty much the exact same thing as the rotoscope. Just to explain what's going on for the After Effects people, our blacksmith layer here is our rotoscope layer and the BG layer is just a duplicate of the original unedited raw footage. Let's grab our speed lines layer and drop it in between. Automatically, the speed lines pop into where they need to go. But are we done? Hell no. Right now, the speed lines just sort of exist, but I want them to fade in. That's why I put the duplicate in earlier. If you don't have the duplicate in, now is a good time to drag it in. Let's enable its visibility, just so we have a background to work from. Let's select our speed lines layer, hit T on the keyboard to drop down opacity, create a stopwatch on the first frame, move eight frames ahead to where he turns around, so basically where I want the speed lines to start kicking into effect and hit this little diamond button here to create a second keyframe. I'm gonna go back to the first keyframe here and drag the opacity down to zero. With both keyframes selected, I'm gonna press F9 on the keyboard. This is gonna make them go easy in and easy out. I'm gonna select the graph editor right up here, select the first point and pull this out so that the transition gets more dramatic. Let's play it now. Now check that out, boys and girls. What else can we add? Well, I definitely want a dramatic push into his face. Let's do that. But we have a problem here. We can't just scale up this blacksmith layer because the background isn't going to follow. So should we scale both? Well, here's an easier way to do it. Hold Control, Shift, Alt, and Y on your keyboard. That's gonna create a null object. Select our blacksmith layer and our BG layer and use this pick whip tool to link it to the null. Now, whatever we do with the null, it affects both layers as well. Let's hit S on the keyboard with the null layer selected, create a keyframe on frame zero, move up to frame eight, and let's scale this guy up. There we go. We've got a nice punch in now, but why stop there? Select the null layer, hit P to drop down position, hold Alt and click on the stopwatch, and let's type in wiggle bracket 10 comma 50 close bracket. Aha, now we have some intense camera shape. But quick little problem, the top of the screen here is exposed. An easy fix for this is to just duplicate our BG layer by hitting Control D. Let's move the BG2 to the bottom and unparent it from anything. Press P to drop down position, right click on position and go to reset. This is going to duplicate the edge pixels onto the edge and this background layer isn't going to move. And that's just a very quick bandage fix to our problem. Now, final step, never forget to put on RSMB. If you do not know what RSMB is, RSMB stands for Real Smart Motion Blur. It's a plugin most of us use to add motion blur to our animations or VFX. If you're not already using RSMB, I highly recommend getting it. Quick note, do not add 
add RSMB to the speed lines. The speed lines already represent motion blur. There's no point on adding motion blur on motion blur. And here we have it, our final result. So there you go. I hope you guys learned something from that tutorial. I certainly got a heck of a good laugh out of it. If you like tutorials like these and want to see more, there is an entire playlist right up here designed to enhance your animations, whether you're a beginner or advanced. Thank you everybody for getting us up to 2,000 subscribers. I'm going to be making a special video on Wednesday, so be on the lookout for that. Don't forget that if you have a doll to spare, make it count by checking out exclusive Levislear renders, soundtracks behind the scenes, and more on patreon.com slash teamwnj. Patreon is a service that allows you guys to pledge an amount you choose every month to support creators like us, but also get exclusive rewards for yourselves. So do check that out. Now that's it and done, that's all from me. Cheers.